most exciting destination in all of northern Wisconsin. LCL Casino Lodge and Convention Center Hayward. LCO. Hello, I'm Kimberly, and welcome to the weekend edition of the Nave News Update. It's Friday, January 6th. Many of the stories you hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for today from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. The Bad River Tribal Council passed a formal resolution January 4th not to renew its interest in the grant of easement for right-of-ways of the Enbridge Energies Line 5 crude oil pipeline through the Bad River Reservation in northern Wisconsin. Furthermore, it calls for a decommissioning and removal of the pipeline from all Bad River lands and watershed. Formerly known as Lakehead Pipeline Company, Enbridge sought renewal of rights of way with the tribe for the existing line that is now 64 years old. Fifteen individual grants of easement rights of way for Line 5 expired in 2013. However, Bad River has reacquired interest in 11 of the 15 parcels of land within the grant of easements rights of way. A new name has been chosen for an archaeological site near the border between Nashville and Brentwood, Tennessee. The prehistoric village that has been referred to as Kellytown will now be known as Atafama, which translates to a place for meeting together in the Chickasaw Muscogan language. No one knows what the people who lived in the village, which was populated with about 60 families during the early and middle Mississippian period, called their home. In fact, until the late 1990s, no one even knew it was there at all. It was then that archaeologists found 12 buildings, 7 graves, and 2 palisade lines designed to protect the village from intruders and wildlife animals. The choice of the Chickasaw language is an appropriate one, being that the Chickasaw are among the dozens of tribes which emerged after the widespread disappearance of the Mississippian culture. In 2014, the Friends of Kellytown, the city of Forest Hills, and Metro were able to pool enough money to buy the site for development as a park. Plans call for outdoor classrooms, a native plant meadow, sculptures, reproductions of the village's buildings, and a greenway connection into both the Brentwood and Metro systems. A new agreement between the state of Michigan and the Natawasepi Huron Band of Potawatomi could give five schools more resources to change their Native American mascots. The federal government approved an amendment last month to a nearly 20-year-old agreement between the tribe and Michigan. The change puts a portion of the state revenue sharing into a special fund dedicated to promoting understanding, history, and good relationships with the state's Native Americans. Each year, up to $500,000 from the tribe's revenue sharing to the state could go into a new Michigan Native American Heritage Fund. Tribal Chair Jamie Stuck said in a news release that the tribe is dedicated to removing the financial obstacles schools face when deciding to transition away from Native American mascots. Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallon announced that former Secretary of State and former Speaker of the House Chris Benge will serve as the State Secretary of Native American Affairs. Benge, who is the Governor's Chief of Staff, is a Cherokee Nation citizen. Cherokee Nation Principal Chief Bill John Baker said tribes and Native legislators, including State Representative Chuck Hoskin, has been advocating for a secretary-level position since the state's Indian Affairs Commission was dissolved five years ago. Hoskin says the new role carries more authority than a Native Affairs liaison, which is important because so many issues, including economic development, education, health care, natural resources and tourism involve partnerships between the governor and tribal governments. Hoskin, who also serves as a Cherokee Nation's Chief of Staff, authored multiple bills in the House of Representatives seeking to establish a permanent Secretary of Native American Affairs position. Glacier National Park's new 2017 passes are on sale now for $50, bringing a touch of park history. This year, the pass carries the image of Francis Gardapee, the first Blackfeet Native American to serve as a ranger in 1930. He worked all over the eastern and southern end of the park before retiring to Browning, Montana in 1948. Gardapee was also a longtime Boy Scout leader, and Chief Lodgepole Peak in the Two Medicine was named after him. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. 
like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.